in blast injuries is unlikely to have isolated organ injury. Patients are more likely to experience multiple injuries, which is known as polytrauma. Some internal injuries might not be apparent initially. So accurate and efficient triage is important before starting the treatments. Generally speaking, triage system is utilized to sort out the patients in order of priority for receiving treatment. It uses color-coded system to categorize the patients. Rat tag patients have life-threatening injuries and they require the most urgent treatment. Yellow tag patients have non-life-threatening injuries and doesn't require immediate medical attention. Green tag patients have minor injuries and they should be treated after those with red and yellow tags. Black tag is used for the deceased or those who are unlikely to live regardless of whatever the treatment they receive. In case of blast injuries, reverse triage system is used. What is reverse triage system? It is also known as upside down triage system. Imagine you're in a battlefield and you're the only doctor in the group. Two injured men are brought to you for treatment. One of them was shot through the chest and the other was shot in the finger. In traditional triage system, chest injury patients should get treated first. But the reverse triage system does the opposite. In a reverse triage system, you must treat the guy with the finger injury first and sacrifice the chest injury guy. Why? Because the guy with the finger injury can return to the battlefield as quickly as possible after treatment. But the chest injury guy can possibly go back to fight. That's why severely injured individuals got treated only after those with minor injuries. After triage and categorizing minor and major injuries, initial assessment of the patient and subsequent resuscitation must follow. In trauma patient, as the body loses blood, there is a drop in circulatory blood volume, causing a drop in core body temperature. When hemoglobin levels decrease, there is decreased oxygen delivery to tissues, causing hypoxia. This triggers anaerobic metabolism inside the cells, that is, the production of ATP in an oxygen deprivation state. The main product of anaerobic metabolism is lactic acid. As more and more lactic acid accumulates in the bloodstream, a condition called metabolic acidosis occurs. This disrupts the optimum condition for proteins to work, causing denaturation of proteins. Clotting factors responsible for blood coagulations are in fact proteins in nature. Denaturation of proteins cause the body unable to clot on its own, known as coagulopathy. The resultant condition from this process, hypothermia, acidosis, and coagulopathy, is known as the lethal triad of trauma. Coagulopathy causes further bleeding episodes, which then leads to hypothermia. This creates a positive feedback loop and starts the vicious cycle all over again. In order to prevent the deadly triad, hemorrhage control is crucial. Therefore, the use of tonic case may be life-saving and also time-saving. Combat application tonic K or CMT is widely used. Emergency and military tonic K or EMT is a pneumatic tonic K which works like a blood pressure cuff. In all cases of polytrauma, airway and breathing management, restoration of hemodynamic stability are most important. Because the patient may be in a state of hypovolemic, septic, or cardiogenic shock. Management should be achieved with standard protocol known as Advanced Trauma Life Support Guideline or ATLS. ATLS begins with primary survey, which includes A, B, C, D, E. 
AoE and serving as spine control. Breathing and ventilation control. Circulation and hemorrhage control. Disability assessment. And exposure. The main goal of primary survey is to assess and treat immediate life-threatening conditions. The following investigations can be done along with primary survey. Baseline investigations like hemoglobin level, blood grouping and matching, bleeding time, clotting time, and oxygen saturations can be done. Chest X-ray is performed to detect pulmonary complications like pneumothorax and hemothorax. Focus abdominal sonography for trauma or fast scan is a rapid ultrasound test to exclude hemoperitoneum and pericardial effusion. It detects free fluid around the liver in the hepatorenal pouch or Morrison pouch, around the spleen for perisplenic fluid, around the heart for pericardial fluid, and around the bladder. The free fluid usually indicates bleeding. E-fast scan or extended fast scan also detects pneumothorax, hemothorax, or a cardiac tamponade. If fast scan shows free fluid, immediately perform an exploratory laparotomy. If fast scan doesn't show free fluid, then resuscitation is continued. All right. Let's move on to secondary survey. The secondary survey focuses on history and head-to-toe -to -toe examination in order to detect more injuries missed during primary survey. Blood tests like bleeding time, clotting time, fibrin degradation product, and D-dimer should be performed to detect DIC. Some patients are sent for a CD abdomen and head due to the concern of intra-abdominal injuries and head injuries. Urinalysis is done to detect myoglobinuria. Serum electrolytes, especially potassium levels, should be checked. Close monitoring of cardiac status by electrocardiogram is also required, as the patient has the likelihood of hyperkalemic cardiac arrest. Geiger counter can be used to identify the radioactive materials. Key components of laparotomy in a trauma patient include control of bleeding, identification of injuries, control of peritoneal contamination, and lastly, organ reconstruction. However, in seriously injured and compromised patients, extended surgery is time-consuming and surgery itself causes a lot of bleeding. If surgeon tries to repair everything in the first operation, it is just too much for the patient to tolerate and it might even lead to patient's death. So, full laparotomy and anatomical repair is sometimes not possible. In that case, the abdomen is closed rapidly just after controlling hemorrhage, decontamination of peritoneum, and repair of the major life-threatening injuries like suturing the cut in case of perforation. Then send the patient to intensive care unit for close monitoring and stabilization. Once the patient gets better, that's the time to perform definitive repair. This operation is known as damage control surgery. A newer adaptation of damage control surgery is called damage control resuscitation, which focuses on early use of blood products to prevent lethal triad of acidosis, coagulopathy, and hypothermia. Blast injuries causes loss of red blood cells in addition to loss of platelets and clotting factors. So it is important to replace them all by transfusion of packed red blood cells and fresh frozen plasma given in one-to-one -one ratio. 
In other words, if you're giving 3 units of packed red blood cells, you must also give 3 units of fresh frozen plasma. Consider transfusion of platelet concentrate, cryoprecipitate, and factor concentrate in severely injured patients with hemodynamic instability. After the patient is stable, identify specific injuries and treat accordingly. This requires multidisciplinary approach involving physician, surgeon, neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon, urologist, toxicologist, and etc. Patients with blast injury to the lungs require high-flow oxygen to prevent hypoxemia. In case of lung contusion, observe the patient for several hours and repeat chest x-ray may be necessary. Adequate fluid administration is also required in pulmonary contusion. Definitive airway management and ventilatory support may be required in respiratory distress syndrome and respiratory failure. Hemothorax and pneumothorax requires prompt decompression by chest tube insertion. Tympanic membrane rupture may be accompanied by hearing loss and infections of the ear cavity. Immediate intervention is not required first. Just evaluate the patient and wait for spontaneous healing in small perforations. For large perforations, tympanoplasty can be performed. Tympano means tympanic membrane. Plasty means repair. Consider topical antibiotic eardrops to prevent infections. But care must be taken not to use antibiotics like gentamicin and neomycin, since they are ototoxic. In traumatic brain injury, surgical removal of the blood clot might be necessary in case of cerebral hemorrhage. In case of fractures, reduction and stabilization of fractures should be done. If the limbs are unsalvageable, perform amputation. Penetrating wounds and open fractures require delayed primary closure. Also consider broad-spectrum antibiotics and tetanus toxoid in grossly contaminated wounds and those undergoing emergency lobotomy. For abdominal compartment syndrome, decompress the stomach and bladder using nasogastric tube and Foley's catheter in order to reduce pressure on the inferior vena cava. Definitive treatment is performing a decompressive laparotomy. Next video is about abdominal compartment syndrome. So see you guys in the next video. Sturdy heart and take care.